Right off the top at five, we're now seeing the pipe bomb terror suspect Caesar Sayok being moved from FBI headquarters in Miramar. FBI agents swarming this auto parts store in Plantation, collecting evidence and interviewing witnesses after this morning's takedown of the suspect. Sky 10 was overhead as a van believed to belong to the suspect was towed to FBI headquarters where investigators will go through it. You can imagine with a fine tooth comb. Agents have been grilling the suspect this afternoon. 56 year old Caesar Sayok, who has been arrested before for making bomb threats. We have live team coverage of the pipe bomb terror arrest. Michael Putney is live with the suspect's connection to Aventura and Todd Tongan is live at FBI headquarters in Miramar. Our D.C. Bureau Chief Ross Palumbo has new information from the U.S. Justice Department news conference this afternoon, but we begin with our Glenna Milberg live at the scene of that takedown today in Plantation. Glenna. Calvin Laurie, we already knew that there was a lot of evidence that investigator ha investigators had because of the number of the packages and the bombs inside had all of those forensic parts. But now we find it's one fingerprint that really cracked the case off of one of the packages matched with DNA because this uh, suspect, Cesar Sayok, has been a criminal before. It was all in the database. They were able to get his cell phone and tracked him right here to this plantation auto zone this morning. Because at first I thought that, um, you know, it could have been a bomb. Right, but right. with the law enforcement response and where they were, it was obviously a flashbang. Grainy surveillance, but you can see the sudden flashbang meant to stun and a swarm of people moving in for the arrest. He wasn't saying anything, you know, he wasn't yelling or screaming or flailing. He was in handcuffs and he calmly was escorted to the vehicle. Saw him get in with no problem. Um, and he just had that look of, okay. It's over. Cesar Sayok, 56, Aventura resident, is now facing five federal charges for what agents believe that he crafted now 14 and maybe more crude explosives, packaged them up in manila envelopes and mailed them to lawmakers, media and a movie star whose common denominator is their public criticism of President Trump. I see FBI, I see cops, I see <laughs> everybody all over the guy. The guy was actually on the ground, so I thought he got shot or something. You can see the posters and signs plastered all over Sayuk's van. Most are logos, messages, and pictures of the president, GOP. The van covered and towed for FBI processing. Agents spent a few hours inside the auto zone at the cash register, speaking to employees and collecting surveillance tape. Still a lot of evidence yet to come, especially with what agents did here. But remember, most, if not all, of these packages on the return address had the address of the offices of Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. We were with the Congresswoman this morning. She really had no idea why she would be part, not only a target, but part of what seemed like a conspiracy. Uh, I will tell you, this is, at least if we have the correct addresses for Cesar Sea, he is a constituent of Debbie Wasserman Schultz. That is her district. She is his congresswoman. So much more to come about this case. I'm Glenna Milberg, live in Plantation today, Local 10 News. And Glenna, at least one witness talked about hearing some sort of explosive device go off during the takedown today. Uh, is that normal? Is that, uh, was that a, a typical procedure for an arrest of this nature? Um, I'm not sure I would call it typical, but it is used in many instances. It is the element of surprise if they want to distract or surprise a suspect, which in this case, I suppose they did. But it is a sudden, not only loud bang. Some people thought that they were hearing a bomb go off here, but there's also this intense flash of what could be blinding light if you're right in front of it. Uh, there is no way not to react in a stunned way when a flashbang goes off. And, uh, and that is what they decided, the federal agents decided today, that they wanted to use to make sure Cesar Sayoff was stunned into submission. As it turned out, as you heard the witness say, he sort of had this look, according to the witness, that, oh, it's over, they got me, and that he might have been expecting that. And he went calmly, but we still have to find out if he is cooperating now. Glenna Milberg live for us, where the takedown happened. Thank you. Our live team coverage moves now to FBI headquarters in Miramar, where the suspect's van is being inspected. Local 10's Todd Tongan has been out there all through the day. Todd, we saw him walk out. You captured that. What's going on right now? Well, right now, things are quieting down out here. It's been a very busy day. Caesar Sayok is no longer 
inside the FBI's Miramar compound, its regional headquarters. He left at about 3.30. He was escorted out by federal agents. The 56-year-old was seen in handcuffs walking out of the Sally Port door, escorted by a number of FBI agents. He had his hands cuffed behind his back. He was wearing a black sleeveless shirt, and he had a very serious expression on his face. Just moments ago, the uh, black suburban carrying Sayak and another one escorting with lights and sirens was seen entering the Sally Port at the federal detention center in downtown Miami, where Sayak will be held until he sees a federal magistrate at 2 p.m. on Monday. Earlier in the day, Sayak's white van was brought here. That van that was covered with pro-Trump messages is going to be a big focus for investigators. It was transported on a flatbed truck from plantation to the compound here by four vehicles, uh, and it was covered with a blue tarp. All those political messages covered up. This new state-of-the-art facility, it's 380,000 square feet. It's a $200 million facility, only a couple of years old. It has all the resources it needs to come over that van in the coming days. Uh, in fact, the compound has its own auto shop inside of it. They will be looking for forensic evidence like explosive residue, remnants of bomb-making materials, and other evidence that can further link Sayoc to these crimes already charged with five federal crimes being held in downtown Miami right now. For now, we are live in Miramar, Todd Tongan, Local 10 News. Okay, Todd, thanks a lot. From Miramar, let's head over to Aventura, where the suspect's mother and ex-wife live. <laughs> Local 10's Michael Putney is live there to continue our team coverage at this hour. Michael. Uh, Calvin and Lori, we have been moved back several times by Aventura police from in front of the condo where authorities say Cesar Soyak, Soyak has been living for some time. It is called the Clipper Building. It is part of the Banyan Cove. Oh, well, that's what happens in live TV. It, it is called the Clipper Building, part of Banyan Cove, which is a very upscale apartment building here in Aventura. He has been living there in unit number 2016. Uh, with his mother, Madeline Soyak Giardiello. She lives there with her husband. She has owned that unit since 1989. Uh, and um, we tried to get some comment from the management company at Banyan Cove. They simply had no comment whatsoever. And we have, as we say, been moved back here several times by Aventura police. And we believe the reason is because the bomb squad went in there. They are clearly looking for traces of the bombs, the 13 IEDs that were made or any bomb making materials that may be in that apartment and still could pose a threat to the people who live here. We are live in Aventura. Michael Putney, Local 10 News.